Well, I'm really excited to introduce our new tractor. This is a Cub Cadet uh, 7360 SS. This is a 2000 model and it is new for us even though it is not a new tractor it is a used tractor and we're going to talk about why we chose a used tractor over a new tractor we're going to go over some of the features of the tractor and the condition of the tractor how much we paid for it and how much uh, other tractors were in comparison to it and their condition also we're going to talk a little bit maybe about driving it and uh just the overall blessing and what we've done with it so far we've had it for a couple weeks so let's get to it and take a look at it so as you can see it's got a loader on it uh, this tractor is a, a four-wheel drive tractor it's the MFWD uh, modified front-wheel drive tractor so essentially four-wheel drive tractor and uh, we bought this brush hog just uh, recently separately from uh, the tractor the tractor is a 36 horsepower it has a 1.7 liter Mitsubishi uh, four-cylinder diesel engine in it um, the previous owner I believe it was one owner and it's gotten some use um, this is a diesel tractor and you can see they've put some uh, additional things here on the bucket. The bucket is fully detachable. It's a quick release uh, bucket, which is really, really nice. You just lift these up here. It actually has these stands. If you need to take the bucket off, it has these stands that come out and attach right under here. And then you just pull the pin on the tractor uh, or on the bucket right here to release the bucket and stand it up by itself um, as you can see the <laughs> the seat has been replaced and this is not a John Deere is a Cub Cadet it has a ROPS a rollover protection system on it which is uh, really nice the tires look very good so when you're looking for a, a used tractor you're gonna want to check the tires the tires are very very important see the wear on them because these tires are very expensive um, the front ones look a little more used. Uh, they're probably, the back ones maybe have 50% left on them. The front ones maybe have 30% left on them. But these tires, uh, what they did to them is, we'll, we'll show, I don't know if you can see it here. Mm, I don't know where the plug is, but anyway, they, they foam filled these tires. So, Good or bad, uh, a lot of people like foam-filled tires, so you never get a flat tire. Um, bad thing about foam-filled tires is they will uh, not, in some situations, ride at the correct um, height, I guess you could say, on the ground. The, the tread won't make the correct connection with the ground or the full pro and proper connection to the ground. Uh, they may be too, too full or too... Uh, uh, deflated I guess you could say um, but it is what it is I'm never gonna get a flat tire with these which is a, a, a real positive so that that's a good thing and it is four-wheel drive so that kind of mitigates uh, the, the traction um, issues with having a fully uh, inflated tire there so additionally on the back here it has a 540 rpm PTO and uh, since I have the brush hog connected here, I can't show you the spline, but the spline will have uh, six uh, ridges on it. Or uh, you can see that this is a little bit dirty. That's from me doing some brush hogging. Uh, but it was, uh, it was pretty well cleaned up when, when we got it a couple weeks ago. This rear linkage here is bent, but it uh, doesn't seem to affect things too much. My brush hog came with a, a top link here which is really important uh, but we have another top link that the tractor did come with all of our lights work all of our turn signals work the front headlights work all of that uh, is working everything on the tractor works as it should uh, the hydraulics are strong and we'll get on here in a second and show the, you the hydraulics and uh, when we were looking over the tractor here, we looked, this is an important thing to look at, is 
have things been greased up properly. So as you can see, this is really sloppy, which is good to see because you can tell that grease has been added and this pin, and there are these pins, are not dry. You don't want dry pins because you got uh, metal rubbing on metal for the longest time and that's not good. You always want to see a little bit of sloppy grease in there because that's going to mean that it's been taken care of. It has the, um, the bar indicator here to tell you when your bucket is uh, flat and level, which is this little bump in the bar here, which is really, really nice. Uh, you can see that uh, it may have been, and we kind of tried to pry on the owner, uh, it may have been uh, damaged a little at one point, but uh, everything works properly. You see these side panels are not original panels. Some, somebody fabricated these these side metal panels here. These are not original. See, they're just screwed into the into the top. But we didn't find any damage that would impede the working of the tractor at all. So no big deal on those. We looked underneath to see if we saw any oil leaks. We did not. It's very clean under there. We looked at these uh, front steering linkage and that's also very clean. No drips, no... Um, running a uh, uh, front uh, gearbox fluid on that. Also, we did find a little bit of a, I don't even think you can see it on here. There's a little bit wet down here. Uh, the, the rear PTO does leak a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But uh, we negotiated the price for some things on the tractor that we didn't care for. And I think we still got a great deal. So let me go over a couple of the controls here. It's a, uh, four and four uh, tractor so you've got your high and low gear right here uh, selector and you've got uh, four gears and high and four gears and low this is oh what's very exciting about this tractor and that i that i was specifically looking for is it's a synchronized transmission or a shuttle shift or there's other names for it depending on where you're from you know what year the tractor is so on and so forth but essentially this shifts like a a manual transmission car in a sense that you do not need to stop the tractor to shift into the next gear you can shift on the fly okay so uh, when you're doing work um, you know even in forward and reverse even in high and low push the clutch in and shift it to the next gear push the clutch in and pull it or push it to uh, forward or reverse. It makes things go a lot faster, things are more seamless, and um, you know, it's just a, it's a nicer way of driving uh, the, the tractor itself. So if you're looking for a used tractor, look for that. It's a, it's a much more convenient way to drive the tractor. So also, we, uh, we've got uh, right here, it was actually modified. Um, this forward and reverse uh, knob right here is not, uh, <laughs> this is not standard, not stock. It, it was uh, it was put in afterwards and modified, um, but it works just fine. And we tested it out uh, repeatedly and it, it's, it's totally fine. We've got your um, rear locking differential here so you can gauge both uh, one tire or two depending on how you, tight you want to turn the speed of your um, raising and lowering of your rear uh, hydraulics for your PTO and you got our four-wheel drive uh, lever right here this is where we check our uh, hydraulic transmission uh, fluid which also services the the whole hydraulic system um, you know all the buttons headlights turn signal all that stuff is up here let's continue I guess moving back around the other side of the tractor here and we've got our our two brake pedals our our, uh, our throttle pedal here and those brake pedals you can lock one tire or uh, keep them locked together we've got our our bucket operation up here now this is a little loose and we might get in there and tighten it up but it didn't impede the operation of the bucket so we were okay with that this one in particular, this model, has an electronic or elect, actually electric uh, PTO engagement uh, button. There's no lever you need to throw anywhere. You just uh, 
engage the PTO and then it tells you where to bring up the RPMs to uh, properly run that PTO right here. You can see 540 RPM is about 2400 RPM, maybe a little bit more, 2500 RPM. I can't remember what the manual uh, stated, but I usually, I run it right on that uh, line. So we checked uh, all of our fluids and I have gone ahead and given, given it an oil change because it did need the oil change. Although the fluid level was fine before, um, it was a good idea to just go through yourself and give it a total tune-up once you get uh, a used tractor. Unless the guy you're buying it from has said he's just had it serviced. Uh, but we did check uh, our dipstick and it was a little dark. So I did change that. I changed our fuel filter out. Uh, change our air filter, added some hydraulic trans fluid, um, we haven't changed that completely yet but we added to it. Our air filter is in here and since this is semi-modified I can't really show you really easily how to get to this air filter in here but it's right back there if you can see my finger and uh, we did uh, replace that. Also, and we got our battery up front. This whole thing comes off, which makes things easy to get to. Our coolant level was um, proper. We did get a little smoke on startup, but that was no big deal. Big deal, it's a diesel. Um, now we did put some fuel treatment in the, uh, in the fuel, and that helped actually clear up some smoke that was uh, coming out when we really engaged that PTO or really uh, got on the throttle and got the RPMs up. It was blown, blown a little blue smoke. So that took care of that, no problem. And we also added some, uh, some oil treatment in there. So let's go. All right, additionally, when uh, you're checking the oil, I did want to mention that you want to look for uh, silvery flakes in there or a milky color. Milky color is going to indicate that you've got potentially water in the oil, meaning you, you may have a, a gasket going and, uh, you know, silver flakes or metal. So that's never a good sign, right? Check for leaks all over the tractor. Um, also check uh, the power steering and make sure that it's tight. You don't want too much play in uh, either direction. Uh, that's going to indicate that there's something wrong with your power steering. I consulted with uh, a lot of people on uh, whether or not to get a four-wheel drive because it is more expensive and they indicated that you know if you've got a loader on there and you're doing you know fairly heavy work like I said there's a 36 horsepower tractor it's a little bit larger it's not a little compact tractor uh, you're gonna need that four-wheel drive to really push through and push that bucket into whatever uh, material you're picking up so um, if you have a loader with a bucket you know I would recommend getting uh, that four-wheel drive on there. You know, when we drove this tractor around and uh, tested it out, which you always need to do on a used tractor, um, we were able to actually pick up some uh, dirt with the bucket that uh, the, the seller had uh, on the property. So that was a, uh, an added plus. We got to see how the bucket worked and if it worked properly. Also, uh, how well the brakes work. So that's that's an important thing to uh, to look at as well. Uh, that your brakes, you have good brakes uh, on the on the entire tractor. Now, when we were looking at the size of tractor to get for our acreage, and we have uh, roughly eight acres, um, you need to really calculate what jobs you're going to be uh, doing with it, right? So we're going to use this lot for brush hogging. We're going to use it for picking up a lot of uh, material in the loader and moving it around the property. We're going to be using it uh, for uh, grading the driveway with a box blade. Uh, we are going to be uh, just putting it through a lot of uh, a lot of tests here, right? So uh, that really pushed us towards a little bit higher horsepower tractor with the real power in in the loader bucket that we needed. Uh, some of the small uh, compact tractors, uh, their buck the bucket is so tiny. I mean, it's like one wheelbarrow full, uh, which is just kind of silly. I believe this is a half yard bucket. Um, I might be off on that, but it's a fairly good size uh, bucket uh, for us to use and be able to do make quick work uh, of 
whatever we have to do around the property, which is actually a lot. We'll show you those videos in the future. Also, uh, we're going to be using the bucket to grade uh, and essentially kind of bulldoze some areas where we're going to put our greenhouse, where we're going to put our, our off-grid uh, uh, cabin for, uh, for that on the other property. We also wanted that extra horsepower for the PTO and for the brush hog in back. Now, we have a five-foot brush hog and that is easily handled by this, uh, this tractor and its horsepower. And if that brush hog is doing some hardcore work like, you know, taking out what it is made to do, you know, take out little um, trees essentially or very, very thick, tall, 10-foot tall, weed-like tree things, <laughs> right? inch and a half, inch, inch and a half in diameter, which it'll handle. You need the higher horsepower to really get that, uh, that thing going properly. Now, like we said, there was a little bit of smoke on startup and there's a tiny bit of smoke when uh, you really get heavy in, into uh, working the tractor. That is cleared up since we put the, uh, the fuel treatment in uh, with the, the diesel. And I consulted a good friend of mine, he's a diesel mechanic, he says, yes, you may have one bad injector, or your injector just could be a little bit dirty. Um, so, if there's a bad injector, yeah, it's going to cost a little bit of money, not that big of a deal. There isn't that much smoke when you're, you're running it just normally. So, after we put that fuel treatment in, run it, normal running, uh, same brush hogging, it's not, it doesn't smoke at all. So... Um, in an older tractor, you're going to get some smoke. In an older tractor, you're maybe going to get a little bit of leaks here and there. So you just need to negotiate that into the price, right? And we found this one is probably three hours away. And here in East Texas, it's really far, hard to find a tractor uh, like this. Tractor prices over time are incredibly stable. And new tractors go up, or, or their prices are going up all the time as they get you know more technology put into them, so on and so forth. So... Uh, the price of older tractors either stays stable or actually increases. It's amazing how they hold their value over time. We paid $6,900 uh, for this tractor. It has 400 hours on it. And that's pretty good for a 2000 Usually normal usage would be about 100 hours a year so this tractor should have about 1700 hours on it but it only has 400 though those 400 hours were pretty rough uh, and it, it it shows a little and the vehicle uh, the tractor was stored outside so you can see some wear in the paint and obviously the seat was was damaged at some point and replaced but that's also not a big deal other tractors, uh, name brands like Kubota's and John Deere's that we were looking at, that were on our lists to, to go and uh, purchase, and we did go and look at some, uh, they, those were all in the uh, $9,500 to $10,000 range for roughly the same year. Uh, I'd say between 1997's and 2001's, and this is a 2000, so in that category that bracket all four-wheel drive all with a loader um, all similar horsepower though they they vary uh, I think the lowest horsepower when we looked at it was a 27 and that was a deer so um, that is part of the reason why we chose this tractor it was listed for 7500 we did look it over really really well and test drove it and we figured uh, that offer of 6900 which they took, uh, was a good offer. Now, why did we not buy a used tractor? Well, if you go look at some of my other videos, we are um, really, really cautious about our finances. Our finances, as we've moved to the country, have been cut in half. Uh, and uh, we are really averse to uh, acquiring debt. You know, we're, we're Dave Ramsey, uh, we're a Dave Ramsey family, we're a debt snowball family, we're a, a total money makeover family. And so um, taking on more debt instead of paying cash for something was something we just simply did not want to do. Now, if this tractor um, has 
some issues in the future, I will fix them. Uh, I have a friend who's a diesel mechanic. And I will promptly sell it or uh, keep it and continue to repair it. Uh, it is not that difficult to repair. And you, you get a lot of learning out uh, on a homestead, right? On how to do things, which is also very important. How to do things yourself. So we, a new tractor would be great. We think they're overpriced. Okay, that is another reason, is buying a new tractor, if we were to get a tractor this size that was brand new, uh, even if it was, you know, an, an off-brand, it's going to cost us, what, 20, maybe $20,000, 19, maybe, though a Mahindra would be a, a little, the, the, probably the cheapest new option to go with, and I think I was looking around 17 or 18 with a Mahindra. That's still a lot of money, right? And I didn't obviously have uh, the means to outright pay cash for, for something like that. So a used tractor, in this case, in our case, is perfectly fine. It runs great. It does the job. It, it'll continue to do the jobs if you take care of it. You have to take care of it, right? So it's taking care of our property. So far, it's beautiful. There's no issues with it. I'd encourage you to, to look at used tractors. Don't be afraid uh, to look at used tractors. Just go over and, and look over the tractor. Do a little bit of learning online. Listen to this video. There's a lot of other great videos out there to tell you what to look for when buying a used tractor. Um, some people would say buy a used tractor from a dealer, which is, which is a good option, yes, because they have their reputation uh, on the line and they don't want to be selling things that come back broken all the time. That's just the way it is. So you will pay more for a used tractor at a dealer than you will from somebody who's selling it, just like a car, somebody who's selling it privately, just like a car. We chose to go that, that route just because of what this tractor was, the value that it had, and the price that we were able to uh, obtain it for. Anyway, I hope you like our video on our new uh, Cub Cadet, new Cub Cadet, uh, 7360 SS um, and oh I did have to mention the loader name or the loader the loader number on it is a 45 loader um, and then we have a, uh, a big red I think that's a big red let's go check it out yeah big B sorry about that we got a big B um, five foot uh, or 60 inch rotary cutter brush hog bush hog whatever you want to call it it works great. It was used once. Uh, I got a sweet deal on that too. Um, it was used once to mow five acres and then the homeowner had to sell it. So I got it for half price. 600 bucks for that is normally uh, 1150 I believe. Anyhow, hope you liked the video. Have a great day. Ask us questions below and we will see you next time.